Hey there everybody, Coach Brandon here. Today I'm going to talk about the double Kouchigari as an option when we have an opponent who's being a little more skittish. Okay, For the last eight weeks we've been looking at good attacks when our opponent is driving into us um, and, and is actually playing jujitsu with us. We've seen spider guard, we've seen collar cuff bicep guard, we've seen um, dealing with an opponent who drops down to the knee drop position. We've seen Ashigarami. We've seen X guard. We've seen Daily Hiva guard. We've seen kick over sweeps. And then we learned how to deal with an opponent who's forcing their way into a split squat position by negating the split squat. Now, we know how to deal with an opponent who's coming into us and actually playing with us and engaging with us. Okay, we've seen a lot of good options there. What do we do when we have an opponent who's being a little more bashful? Maybe they've been swept by us a couple times, maybe they're afraid of our guard, and for whatever reason, they're playing a little more of a distance game. Okay, they're playing a tactical distance game rather than just walking in and getting caught into my open guard. Okay? It can be difficult to attack an opponent who's reluctant to engage, right? They're not engaging, and how do we attack them? One good attack we can use is the double coochie guard. And again, I really like this as an option when I have an opponent who's not engaging with me. To help you guys understand what a double kochigari is, I'm first going to sh just show you guys what a, a standard kochigari is. Okay, it's typically done as a takedown on the feet, kind of a judo, a judo technique. Let's take a look at it. So in a situation where I'm here, up on the feet here, I can pull him into a square stance, get myself onto the apex of the pyramid, this pyramid position, where I'm here, right at the apex of the pyramid between his two feet. I step in, I go into my second foot, I catch, and I'm going to push him back so that all of his weight goes onto his heel. Once his weight's onto his heel, I can use the sole of my foot to take his foot forward, and I get that takedown. So again, a situation where I establish a power hand to control his head, and a control hand to control his sleeve. I get up into a square stance here, and I bring myself onto the pyramid, uh, the apex of the pyramid here. Now, as I step in, I want to start pushing Ant back so that all of his weight goes onto his heels. I'm going to commit my body weight, and I'm going to use the sole of my foot behind one of his legs to chop his leg out in the direction the toes point. So I do everything at once, and we have a Kujigari down on the floor. So what is a double kochigari? If that's what a kochigari is, what is a double kouchigari? Okay. So a double kouchigari is a situation where Ant is standing in front of me in the open guard, and maybe he's playing, you know, he's reluctant to engage, he's playing a distance game, and I go in, and I take both of my feet, and I lock them behind his ankles. Okay. Um, let's rotate just a little bit. So my two feet, let's go all the way. Lock in just like so. I want to keep my feet up, pointing up at a 45 degree angle. If my feet are low, it's going to be more likely that he's going to be able to step off my hook and recover. Okay, so the notion of a double kuchigari is I hook both legs so he can't take a step backward, and then I apply a pushing force to sit him down to his butt. Okay, so that's what a double kuchigari is. When I use my feet as hooks. I want to make sure I'm using sticky hooks where I pull my toes back toward my shins. Okay? I don't just want to have a dead and relaxed foot. If I'm here and ankles to step off, you can easily step off that foot. Okay? Not to mention, another thing that I want to do is I want to be applying outward tension. So not only do I need to keep an active sticky hook, but I also need to be splaying my feet apart so that they're putting tension into the legs. If I go here, but I don't put any tension into the legs and ankles to step out, he can step out. So what I can have you guys do as a basic drill, just to get comfortable with this double kuchigari, is to lock in your feet, make good sticky hooks, pulling your toes back to your shins, and apply outward pressure on the ankles. And as ankles to step out, I want to make sure I'm trying to follow them, okay? So I come in, I, I hook, ankles to step, and I'm following, I'm not letting them get off my hooks. Okay? So, the notion of a good double kuchigari has that stickiness. With the sticky hooks pulled back to your shins, 
and applying outward pressure on the legs. So when he goes to step off, we just end up following him. We keep tension uh, in that connection between our shoelaces and his ankle. So that's just the basic drill I want you guys to work with. You're gonna go through, apply your sticky hooks, and have your partner go to step off. Try to step back in a way, step backward in, back and out of my hooks. You shouldn't be able to, it should be kind of hard, okay? Um, another important concept or detail with the double Kuchigari is I need my opponent to be in a square stance. If Ant is up in a staggered stance for me, I can easily hook in on one leg, but there's a clear problem. I can't reach the far leg, okay? If Ant is in a square stance for me, I can easily access both of my partner's legs and I can put them down with a pushing force. So we need to have those good sticky hooks and an outward tension being applied into the ankles. And we wanna to try to get our opponent into a square stance. Now some of your opponents and partners will take a square stance on their own. Some of your partners will approach you with a square stance and you'll be able to go through and knock them down. Other partners of yours, maybe people who are a little more tactically aware, they'll be reluctant to approach with a square stance. They know that's not a good thing. So they're going to approach with a staggered stance. If we have an opponent who approaches with a staggered stance, they have one lead side and a rear side. I want to give a pull on the rear side, okay, typically. There are ways to pull on the, on the near side as well. For instance, using a shin to shin. We'll, we'll look at this later where I can use a shin to shin and I can pull to get my partner to take a step, okay, so square stance. When I, I'm sorry, not square stagger. When I pull, he takes a step, I can go and catch and I'm finish. We'll look at that in a little bit. For the upper body, maybe we're here grip fighting, I can reach through, getting a cross wrist grip or a cross cuff grip, and I can give a pull on that side to get him to take a step. And once again, I lock in with my two hooks, I apply a pushing force, and we get him to go backward. So if he's already in a square stance, you can just go right into the technique using one of the many different variations I'm going to show you guys today. If he's in a square, or I'm sorry, a staggered stance where he has one lead leg and one trail leg, we've got to do what we can to get that trail leg to come to us. If I can get that trail leg to come to me, now I can go through and I can hit my double kuchigari again. Okay. So now that we have some basic fundamental understanding and insights into the double kuchigari. Let's start looking at a few options. All of the double kuchigaris are gonna have this element where I block my partner's ankles with my two feet, and I apply a pushing force to knock them back. Now that pushing force can be done on the lower body, or it can be done on the upper body, depending on how my partner's positioning his posture. The first ones I'm gonna show you guys are my personal favorites. I like to use the double kuchigari focusing in on the legs and the lower body. There are ways to hit the double kuchigari focusing on pushing on the upper body as well, and I'm going to show those as well, but I do favor the lower body ones. So let's get to it. The first lower body one we're going to look at is just a double leg push. I typically use this one when I have an opponent who's already square to me. They've already presented a square stance and their center line is exposed to me. I just go through and I get the finish. Okay. So when he's, let's say, standing at a square stance and he's a little bit more upright, so his upper body is not so much in my way. Okay. This would be a situation a little wider with the feet, if you would, like a good shoulder width part, yeah, perfect. Now from here, the way that I'm gonna make this work is I'm gonna take a staggered butterfly stance. That is where I, I don't play square on my butt, but rather I plant one hand on the floor and I kind of sit to one hip, okay? Now when I'm here, I'm, I'm lining things up, getting ready to go, I wanna make sure that my foot is lined up inside of his foot. I don't want to have this foot out here to the outside. When I throw myself in now, I might have trouble getting this foot back to the inside position. So when we're here playing, uh, playing the game, I want to have my both feet in the inside position. Now, even though they're not actually all the way inside, that's fine. I just want to have an axis here, a straight line where if I extend my leg, it'll be in the inside position. Now from here, I'm actually going to throw my body forward to impart uh, some momentum into this. So I'm going to post on my left hand and my right foot so I can pick my hips up off the floor. And with my hips up off the floor, I'm going to throw myself in 
to and. Okay, I'm going to throw myself in and lock in just like so. Getting those good sticky hooks, feet pointing up at a 45 degree angle, and applying that outward pressure against the ankles for that tension. Okay, so I'm here, my partner's grappling, maybe the legs are a little more exposed because he's standing tall. I post with my stagger butterfly stance, my two feet inside. I throw my, physically throw myself forward and I lock in. Here. Now, as soon as I lock in, I'm going to take my two hands on his thighs, just above the knees, and apply a pushing force. And it goes down. Now, from here, we've created the double seated position. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through, and in a, a gi situation, I'm going to grab a cross pant cuff grip. And now as I go to get up and hand goes to get up, I'm going to win because I have the pant cuff. So one more time on that one. Uh, one thing to think about, guys, avoid pushing on the knees. If you come in and you push immediately, or I'm sorry, directly on the kneecaps, sometimes you can get a quick hyperextension of the knee joint and we don't want to injure our partners. So let's be careful to not push on the, on the kneecaps themselves. Let's push a little bit above the kneecaps on the thigh so we avoid hyperextending our partner's knees. Okay? So we're here, we're playing this game. I see that he's not really engaging with me. It could be that maybe I'm going to get grips and he's pulling away. Right? I go to get a grip and he yanks away from it. I go to get a collar grip and he bats my hand away. And he's just being really reluctant to engage. He's kind of afraid of my guard now because we, we've seen so many good ways to work from the open guard. So now he doesn't want to play. So from here, I'm going to throw myself in aggressively. Lock my two feet in behind the ankles and apply that pushing force to the thighs. And then I stand up with the ankle to ensure that I win the fight for top position. So that's our first option when we have a player who's playing square to us and their posture is relatively up so we only have access to the lower body. Now let's look at another situation where my partner's posture is still up. So we're still going to be focused on the lower body here in front of me. But now he has a, a staggered stance, okay? Stand up. So in a situation now the upper body is a little more up, but he has a, a staggered stance. I can't just throw myself in and hook, okay? I can't do what we just did. I've got to find a way to get that far leg to me. And as I already mentioned, it's going to involve pulling my opponent forward to get him to take a step, okay? So I'm here, we're engaged, I'm going to go through. And I'm going to lock in my shin to shin two on one, just like we've seen before. We've seen in the past that I can use this shin to shin two on one to go into Ashigarami. Um, I can also use it to get him to take a step to go into the uh, double Kuchigari. Okay. So from here, he's got that back leg. All I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a pull with this arm on the leg. I'm going to pull toward my posted hand, and I get him to take a step. That's all I need. Once he takes a step, I lock in with my hook. I apply a pushing force with my two feet on the double leg, on both legs. I gather up that leg and I stand up, making sure that he can't put his foot down and making sure that he can't get back to the top position. Now, something that I haven't mentioned yet with the double Kuchigari, but is very, very important. You always have access to the Ashigarami out of a failed double Kuchigari. Why is that? because both your feet are in the inside position and his two knees are off the floor, okay? So in a situation where maybe I pull Ant in, I hook, but he grabs my collars, for instance, and I go to knock him back, but he's gonna hold himself up by attaching himself to me, but I can't break him down, okay? If you go through the double coup guard, you can't push them backward, you don't get a breakthrough, that's fine. Just pull yourself into the Ashigarami, and now we're back into the entire game that we've learned a few weeks ago. We have the single ankle sweep. If I can get the far ankle, I have the double ankle sweep. And if neither of these are working, I can always make a transition into the X guard. So let's not forget about, about all those options. They work very, very nicely in partnership with the double Kuchigari because of the need to have both of our feet in the inside position. Okay. So on the lower body, we have a square stance where I just dive in. And we have a stagger stance where I take a shin to shin two on one and I force them into a square stance. Okay. And at any point, if I go to push them back and it doesn't work, I can always pull.
pull myself in using my two heels on the mat to an ashigarami. So keep that in mind as we go through all these, all of these options. If any of them fail, you can always go back into an ashigarami. Another way this might fail. Let's say I lock in, back up. I lock in my shin to shin. I go here. I go to push, but he steps off. That's fine. We're right back to our same shin to shin. Okay? I can go for a second time. I go boom, back into the kujigari, or double kujigari. Or if I go here, he steps off. I can go again into our shin to shin ashigarami entry. So all these techniques you're going to start to see a lot of these things coming together okay, and working in unison. But yeah, I want to make sure that you guys understand that you can have a second or a third shot at this Kojigari if he steps off. Okay? If we make our shin shin contact and I'm going to pull him in and he steps off, I can go right back in again. Okay? There's no reason I can't go a second or a third time. So those are our options on the lower body. I have either a double leg push if my opponent has a square stance, or a shin to shin to pull him into a square stance so I can use that double leg push again. Now let's look at a few of our uh, double kujigari options when I have an opponent who's bent forward a little bit more and I have access to the upper body. Let's first deal with an opponent who's uh, severely bent over into almost a head-to-head -head position because you have opponents who do this to you. He stands up. I'm playing my guard and he stands. Yes, he's almost head-to-head. -head. He's playing from here. Okay. Uh, let's start with square stance. If he has square stance here, he's playing head-to-head. -head. Maybe we're in here hand fighting, right? He's hand fighting me. I'm hand fighting him. We're doing this thing. I'm going to take a collar tie on ant and my other hand goes to the floor. So a collar tie to control the posture, hand to the floor to give me movement. Now, using my hand on the floor, I'm going to fire myself in, just like I did before. Here where I can make my two sticky hooks. And now with this collar tie, I'm going to use my elbow, my forearm, my wrist, my forearm, my elbow, this lower arm bone right here, against his shoulder to apply a push and with the collar tie. Now from here, I give a simple hip heist and control that second leg to make sure he can't get up, and we get to the top position. Alternatively, before hip heisting, you can go down here right away. Or you could choose not, not to hip heist, but you can choose to just come into here. And now from here, I could go to stand up. And as Ant goes to stand up as well, he's not able to, and I can keep him down. Another option you have that we haven't even talked about. But since I have my two feet in the inside position and his knees off the floor, there'd be nothing wrong with me knocking him down. And if you're a leg locker, sliding into an ashigurami, and now you're ready to start going through and getting your leg locks here. That's a good option as well. Um, again, anytime you have the double kujigari as an option with your feet in the inside position, you have access to the, um, the ashigurami. And anytime you have access to the ashigurami, you can use it to either sweep your opponent, or you can use the ashigurami to submit your opponent with leg locks. Okay. So. Um, we saw that if he has a square stance, he's playing head to head, we're grip fighting. I can take my collar tie back up a little bit. Um, head forward, feet back. Yep. Playing here. Okay. Yes, go here. I can't reach. Okay, I can't reach my hooks. So I've got to throw myself in. Here. Now from here we can control the lower body. Stand up. And we got it. If he has a stagger stance, head to head. And we're here. I can sometimes use this collar tie. Or I can stick my thumb inside the lapel and get a grip here as well. They both work. But I can use this to try to pull him back into a square stance, make my two hooks, and knock him back. Now from here I grab the pants, I heist up, and I take top position. So that is a, a, an upper body variation of the double kujigari focused on my opponent's head, where I control the head with a collar tie. But it's not the only one. We're going to look at a number. Next one we're going to look at is maybe a shoulder push. My opponent is up. And he's got a little bit of a bent over posture, that, um, but uh, this time he's not like super close to me. He's not head to head. That head's a little further away. And we need to be a little cautious about overreaching. Okay, if you start reaching too much from this position, from a seated position, 
you'll have athletic opponents who jump, literally jump over your guard into arm bars, into triangles, and things like this. And nope, that's perfect. And you can get some hot water real quick with those fast, those fast grapplers. So be cautious about overreaching here. Keep your elbow relatively close to your knee. So we're in this situation, and is you know, just like so. Once again, I'm going to post my hand on the floor. Once again, I'm going to line my foot up to the inside position, making sure that my foot is not going to be out here, outside somewhere. I'm going to throw myself in and make my two hooks behind his legs. Except this time, rather than posting my two hands on the thighs, I go up and push on the shoulder. And that's another good way to knock your partner down, heist up to the top position, and score your sweep. And we're here, he's bent over, he's not quite head to head. The head's too far away, I don't want to reach too much. So I'm going to quickly, explosively throw myself into the position, lock my feet in, and give a push right here on the shoulder. So here we're playing, go in. And we have our double Kuchigari. Um, if Ant is up, again, a stagger stance this time, same general position, but this time staggered. An option that I have is to go through and take a wrist grip. And I can use this wrist grip on the rear side to get him to take a step. We go in with our two hooks, push back in the shoulder, and we get a knockdown. Again, square stance. We have our, we're focusing on the single shoulder push this time. One hand I'm pushing on the shoulder. He has a stagger stance. I get a wrist grip. Could be two on one, could be a cross wrist. Two on one's probably better. We give a tug. We go in, we knock him back, and we come up to the top position. Okay, so we've seen the head, we've seen the shoulders. Let's look at a single cuff grip, okay? This could be a situation where he's standing, for instance. Okay, playing guard here, he starts taking a grip on my pants and he wants to pass guard, okay? I'm gonna take a grip right here, four fingers in, inside the cuff, and I'm gonna place the heel of my hand against his wrist, just like so. And I'm gonna push in, I'm gonna physically pop that grip off, okay? Now, as that grip pops off, I'm gonna Post my other hand on the floor, scoot in, lock in with the feet, and we apply a pushing force using that cuff grip. We're pushing the wrist through the legs and getting that backward push through the cuff, okay? So I'm playing here. He maybe takes a grip on my pants. That's fine. I get my grip. I'm physically going to push it off. As I throw myself in, I hook my feet. I continue to push until he goes down. I get a grip on the cuff, we go to get up, and I don't let him get to the top position. So one time, kind of a regular speed, you'll see all this happens pretty quick. We're in here, we're grabbing, he takes that grip, and we're up. Another option is double sleep grips. Okay? This one. I need to do when my opponent is a little bit closer to me because I don't have a free hand to plant on the floor and push myself in, to scoop myself forward. One option that you might have with this is an opponent who comes in and gets Toriano grips. Okay. He gets Toriano grips, I take double cuff, I pummel my feet into the biceps and we're into a spider guard now. Now one, ant, one thing Ant might want to do from the spider guard is back up and away, pulling me up to a seated position to pop my hooks off. Exactly. He wants to get my two feet off the biceps. And if he can do this, he can now start passing in either direction. So I'm here playing spider and I see Ant going to pull, pull, pull. I'm going to come up, lock my two feet behind, using that same heel of the hand method to break his grips that we used before. I pop his two grips off and I take him down. Now from here, I control one of the pant cuffs. I go to get up, and if Ant goes to get up as well, he will not be able to because I have pants. And we take him down and get our sweep. So again, double cuffs. Now here, I'm punching my spider guard. He goes to pop my spider guard off, and I knock him back, and I come to the top position. Um, this could also work if he's up. And maybe we're here and he starts looking to take Toriyama grips. 
I could look to go two hands on, immediately extend, pop those grips on, and try to push them down. Okay, you can get creative with this. There's more than one way to do this. But the notion is that if I can get both sleeve cuffs and block both ankles and apply a pushing force, he's gonna fall back. Okay, one more option that I do like quite a bit is the two-on-one sleeve grip option. This is our last upper body grip we're gonna look at, okay? So, for instance, we're in this, we're playing a seated guard, I take a cross cuff grip on Ant, I pull through, and I take a second grip up here on the seam that runs down the back of every sleeve. I reach up here, I grab either the high tricep or up in the armpit, anywhere in here, okay? So I either pick control the shoulder. So I get to set my one grip, my two grips. Now, I lean back. I like to put a foot in the hip. What I like to do from here is I like to use my right leg, and as Ant goes to control my, my second leg, I pummel to the inside position, pushing it away, and I start to pull him down into triangle attacks. Okay, so that's one good way to use this two-on-one sleeve. Posting in the hip, he goes to control, I pummel to the inside, pull him into attacks. Now, when you hit him up, when you hit your partners with this technique once or twice, they're not going like to you, like you pulling him down into you. As I go to pull Ant into me, he's going to pull back in a way. He's looking to walk away. Oh, yes, he's not letting me pull in. So as he pulls, I'm going to ride his momentum, coming up to a seated position. Pull, pull, pull. I go to block, and now again, I'm going to use my two grips to shove his hand between his two legs, pushing with both my arms as I lean my head forward. And we get a knock down to the floor. Now again, you have not scored a sweep yet. There is no sweep. You only get the sweep if you come on top and control it for three seconds. It does me no good if Ant's able to quickly hip heist to the top position. So once again, I'm gonna to go to get to the top position and to make sure Ant can't, I'm gonna go down and control the pant cuff. Now as Ant goes to get up and I go to get up, this is how I guarantee that I'm gonna score the sweep and not allow him back on top. Two on one sleeve gripping one more time situation when we're here, maybe I establish a torque, maybe we're here grip fighting, he might take a grip on, you know, on, on me, on my hand or wrist or something, I go through, and I break, and I get a two-on-one two -on -one sleeve grip right here, okay? Again, if he's a little more naive, he hasn't been hit with this before, I can post a foot in the hip, pull my left foot to the inside, and pull him in my attacks. Once you've hit him with that once or twice, he's going to be susceptible or weary for it. So I'm looking to pull him in. He's pulling back and away. I ride that up. I connect to both ankles. I push and we knock him back. So one more time, kind of a regular speed if you would. Or here, he takes like grips on me or whatever. I go through. I snatch the grip off. I'm going to go here for the triangle. He goes back and away. And I clip him down to the floor. And I come up on top. So that's a lot of good information. Let's quickly recap some of that. First, double Kujigari, our foot position. I want to pull my toes back to me so I have sticky hooks. I want to keep my toes pointed up at 45 degrees so that I have height. I don't want to be too low or you can simply step over my hooks. And then I'm applying outward tension into the angles. So if he tries to step back in a way, it's hard for him. If he tries to step back, I follow. I'll raise my feet and I'll follow whichever leg he's trying to step with. Okay. I want to make sure I keep those hooks nice and tight. That's a good drill for you guys to work. We've seen I want a square opponent to go into my double coochie guard. If he has a square stance, I can easily lock into both angles. If he has a stagger stance, you can still go into Kochigari, but you're first going to have to put him into a square stance. You're going to have to pull on that rear side or pull using that shin to shin two on one. You've got to give a pulling force to get him to take a step at the rear leg to square stance up. And then we lock in those hooks just like we taught, feet up, tracking if we need to, and we apply a push. Um, if the double Kuchigari ever fails, for whatever reason, you go to knock him back and he doesn't get knocked back down, maybe he stays right where he is and he holds on to you. If it fails for that reason, we can always go into an Ashigarami game. And you guys know what to do from there. If I go in and he steps off my hook into a, square, into a stagger stance, Remember this one, yeah. If I go in and he steps off, go shin to shin, two on one, 
And this leads into the, sec to the second variation we looked at. Right, if I'm over here with the shin to shin, and he has a staggered stance, I can always pull and clip him down. Okay. So we always want to have an opponent who's in a square stance. If they're not in a square stance, move them to a square stance. There's one more thing you can do that I didn't touch on. What if he's in a staggered stance? Another option that I have is that I can move myself. He's not in a square stance, right? But what if I were to move my body? What if he stays where he is? And I move here. Now he has a square stance. I can go in. So that's another option. Let's say he has a stagger stance. We didn't talk about this one yet. I can literally throw myself over here to that pyramid position that I talked about earlier. And I can try to go into the double kuchigari there as well. But we need an opponent in a square stance relative to us. So now that we have all those basics, right? Sticky hooks, high toes, our tension and following, and a square stance, now we're ready to start looking at those practical applications. We've seen that the practical applications can be focused on either the lower body or the upper body. If he has the lower body square stance, we've seen I can go, I can go straight in and push on the quads, push on the thighs. Avoid the knees for safety. We don't want to hyperextend knees. If he has a stagger stance, we've seen I can go in and I can pull him to a square stance. Okay, so those are our lower body focused. If any of those fail, you can go right into uh, Ashigurami. If I go square, here he steps off. I can go right back, he steps off. I can keep doing this as many times as I need to to eventually get the breakthrough. So, go ahead and step off this hand. Ready? Come back. Step off. And ideally, they won't be able to step off. Okay? That's because I apply, use that outward tension with my ankles. When you try to go step off, you got caught and you got tripped down to the floor. So those are the lower body methods. Either double thigh push, double knee push, double leg push, I should say, double leg push, or a shin to shin two on one, make him take a step. So that's square and staggered for lower body. And we had upper body. We saw our different variations of upper body grips. We're working our way from the top, going down. Okay, we start at the top with head. If he's playing head to head, I can get a, a collar tie, go in, I can knock him down, pushing here. If he's a little taller, or yeah, if he's, if he's staggered, that was a good one. If he's staggered, I can try to physically pull him and push, okay? If he's a little taller, and I don't have a head, but I can kind of reach the shoulder, I can go through and push on the shoulder here, okay? If he starts reaching for me, I can get cuff grips. Even if he could start off as a, a grip like I showed, where I pop, or it could literally just start, maybe we're grip fighting, and this is the only grip I got. And now maybe we're, we're playing like this. Maybe he's trying to pull back and away from this grip, and we're moving. I can go through, and I can hit the same double kuchigari there, okay, but a single cuff grip. We've also seen the notion of double cuff grips. I'm here, he takes two grips in my pants, I go two grips here, I lock in, push, stripping the grips, and down. We also saw double cuff from spider. He takes grips, I feed in. We're playing a spider dart 